fellow crafters Janine here and today I'm going to show you how I made this really pretty shaker card with elements from my December Simon Says stamp uh, card kit of the month um, as you will see in the video there were some challenges along the way and things don't always go as we in planned when we're crafting um, and hopefully this will serve as another video in many of my videos that show you that you can work around mistakes and, and issues um, with a little ingenuity and a little perseverance. You don't have to trash an entire project because one thing goes wrong. Anyway, or in my case, sometimes when several things go wrong. But <clears throat> let's get started and I'll show you how I made this really pretty shaker card. I started by cutting my cardstock um, in half, so I cut it to um, five and a half, no, I'm sorry, four and a quarter by 11 length, um, and then gave it a score in the middle. And I almost always am off by just a little bit, like a centimeter. And um, so I went ahead and folded it and gave it a good crease. And then I trimmed off that little bit that was hanging over the end. It's a lot easier than trying to recrease it, which never looks right. I uh, gave it a nice good crisp crease with my folder there, or I don't know really what to call it. I think it's a burnishing tool, but anyway. And then I cut the decorative paper that I was using for the front of the card, the front scene, um, to match the size of the front of the card. And I was really careful with it because I wanted to make sure and um, have you know, uh, the scene, uh, the two deer, both of them in view on the front of the card. And then I got a couple of circle dies and I have a smaller one and a larger one. The smaller one um, is going to be the one that I cut on the, uh, the front piece and then the, I'm going to use the larger one to cut the back piece so that it will have an edge to adhere to the front. And so here I'm just deciding where you know, I want what part of the scene I want to cut out. And then using my evolution, I used the larger circle to cut the back scene out. And I used a little bit of masking tape to hold it in place while I was getting it positioned on the evolution. And then I put it in between my two plates and cranked it on through. And I really do like this machine. It, it's it's just so nice to only have to worry about two plates and not a whole bunch of different sandwich plates. And so it came out beautiful as always. Always get good results with my evolution. And then using the smaller die, I found the position, I figured out where I wanted the uh, window for the shaker card to be on the front piece of uh, decorative paper. And so I went ahead and placed the smaller die there and again run it through the evolution and so that's where our shaker window is going to be. I decided that it would look a little more interesting if it was offset a little bit rather than dead center so I just had some leftover acetate from packaging and I just cut a piece of it large enough to fit around the window and then used my tape runner to secure it and then ran my embossing buddy over it uh, to remove static because it was quite staticky. And then I just started building my foam tape around the opening of that circle um, to of course pop up the back and to also you know create that window for the uh, shaker bits uh, to be in and, and for the foam to hold them in place inside that circle. And then after I got that completed, I started, I placed some seed beads, some um, iridescent seed beads in there. I thought they would kind of look snow or icy. Um, and then I added various colors of blue sequins that I had. And this is about the time that I realized that one layer of foam was not enough, um, that it was going to take um, another layer of foam. But I love the way all these different blues played together. I just thought they were beautiful. So um, one by one, I peeled the backing off of the foam strips that I had already laid down. And then placed another piece of foam or mounting tape on top of them. 
and built that height of that window up. And that worked perfectly because those seed beads were kind of thick, and so they weren't moving. They weren't going to move around a lot without a little more room. And once I got that completed, I just peeled the backing off of all the strips, and then placed the scene for the uh, shaker window um, over the tape. And thank God for that writing on the back of that paper because it helped me to really get the scene straight. And perfect it just came out beautiful and I gave it a little test shake to make sure everything could still move around on the inside see if I needed another layer of foam and then I added double layers of foam around the rest of the uh, the top of the card or the shaker part of the card so that it would match the foam around the window And I don't know why I have the hardest time peeling the backs off of these double-sided sticky things. But I always have just a little bit of trouble, but in here you can see I just laid another layer of foam right on top of those and gave it that extra height that it needed. And now I have everything, all the foam adhered, and so I'm going to stick it to my card base, but then I realized I had a little trimming to do because I had some foam sticking out from the edges. Um, so I just went ahead and took my scissors and trimmed that foam up where I needed to. And then adhered it to the front of my cord, or to my cord base rather. And I still think I used just a little bit too much contents for my shaker window, but it's okay. It's really pretty and sparkly. And that's about the time I realized I was not happy with all the foam that I could see around the edge. So while I was trying to figure out what to do with that, I decided that the front of the card needed a little bit something extra. So I took the sequins that came with the kit from Jelly Bean Soup and just place them around to add a little extra sparkle to make it look like maybe some of the snow was falling in that woodland scene. And then I decided it needed a sentiment, so I stamped uh, the Merry Christmas sentiment from the stamp kit, from the stamp that came with, stamps that came with the kit, I can't talk today. Gave it a few test stamps, as you can see there, and then cut it out carefully and realized that I did not let my ink dry long enough before I started handling it. So I stamped it again, and again, I cut it out um, to fit in the bottom right corner of the card, but this time after the ink had dried so that I didn't smudge it again. And then I simply adhered it uh, with a piece of um, mounting tape like I had used on the uh, shaker part of the card. And I think that was just the perfect touch. It just needed that little sentiment. And I'm still very bothered by the foam that I can see. And I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. So it's about that time I decided to pull my big markets out and go ahead and try and color the edges of the foam that were visible from around the side of the card. And here I'm just testing out some different colors to see which one I thought would work. And I chose this kind of grayish blue-green and I started coloring while the shaker port was still in the card and here I inked the edge of that um, shaker to help it match and, and look on purpose but then as I started fooling with it I realized how much bleed through I had from the big market and again still trying to figure out what I was going to do so I decided the only thing I could really do at this point was just to remove the shake or attempt to remove the shaker front from the card base which I was able to do without destroying it and then I came back in with my big market and uh, finished coloring the edges of the foam to help disguise them so they weren't so glaringly obvious and then I used my tape runner which I'm sorry you can't see in this view and I uh, just re stickied all of the foam and where the uh, cord had kind of um, torn and, and adhered to the sticky part of the foam and I just re stickied it. I can't think of another way to say it and pressed it onto a new 
card base and it looked much better. I, I still wasn't entirely pleased with it, but at least it was a little bit disguised and looking a little bit better. So you can't see it nearly as much now. And realized I missed a couple of spots, so I'm trying to go in carefully with my big market and um, kind of fill in those spots, but I ended up having bleed through again on the inside of the card. So I'm going to deal with that in a little bit. In the meantime, I cut a piece of white card stock down to size to it here on the inside for a place to write a sentiment. And then so that it would match the front, I went ahead and inked that so that it would look, uh, everything would look very on purpose and intentional. And I adhered it to the inside of the card just using the tape runner. And you can see that little bit of bleed through of that ink on the top left of the screen. And I went ahead and stamped my handmade by stamp on the back of the card using the same silver ink, again, keeping everything coordinated. And about this time, I figured out how to fix that ink bleed through. I put a few sequins right here um, to make everything coordinate, and then I placed some sequins over the bleed through of the ink. So now everything looks intentional. Had I just put sequins at the top, it wouldn't have looked on purpose. You'd have been wondering what the heck were those sequins doing there. And then I stamped another one of the sentiments from the kit, again to make everything look intentional like all of that was meant to be there. Well, I tell you, this was the little card that could. Um, you know, you, you see in my crafting all the time that things don't always go as planned. They don't always end up looking the way I intended. Uh, my crafting is definitely one of trial and error but this just goes to prove that you know don't don't give up don't trash the project uh, step back think about it a little bit and you can find a solution in this card you know I did and putting it on a new base um, using some strategically placed sequins and I can see another place because I see a silver thumbprint and there you go no more silver thumbprint but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I'm really pleased with the way this card turned out. I think it's beautiful, it's unique, and I think whoever receives it is, is truly going to enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And as always, you have a very blessed day.